if you have that condition within an hour or two you can drop dead and die if it's not managed properly and, um, because they wrote a report to cover their backs imagine they're telling me that to cover their backs we also have to be seen doing our part i know it's something that you have no control over but from my experience don't get sick guys just don't get sick it's my job to give you the results which were requested by another gp can you imagine the frustration that we need you to come back to the hospital something has changed in your x-ray guys does an x-ray ever change does an x-ray ever change when you are in a first world country you expect that if you are sick you are going to get the best care ever because this is a first world country meaning that the care that you expect to get from a first world country is there as opposed to the care that you can get to a third world country but in my case because this is a situation that i experienced it is not the case guys i was really disappointed because i presented to the hospital i think it was on the 11th of february 2024 and i was finally given treatment on the 2nd of may 2024 which means it took about close to three months for me to get critical treatment that i needed so in this video i'm going to be explaining to you my ordeal that i experienced in the uk hospitals and before i dive into today's video guys it's the most important thing that you need to do when you're in uk is avoid being sick at all costs avoid being sick at all costs i know it's something that you have no control over but from my experience don't get sick guys just don't get sick so if you are new to my channel welcome my name is pauline popomoyo and in this channel i share content on how you can relocate to overseas and i also share content on life in the uk in general and welcome to another episode of life in the uk uncut where i share with you my life in the uk the good the bad the ugly and the bizarre and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you my not so good uh, experience with the uk hospitals for some time in february while at least i was at work guys i started experiencing some chest pains i ignored them they went away so as i was driving back home i suddenly had excruciating chest pains which were radiating to my arm radiating to my jaw it was really really terrible so i i couldn't even drive guys i had to park in the middle of the road because of the intense pain that i had in the middle of the road put on some hazards because i just couldn't drive eventually when the pain was dying down i drove home and as soon as i got home i decided to call my gp because the pain was still there and it has it had intensified again so when that pain had intensified i called the gp and explained that i am experiencing intense pain and it's intense chest pain i've never had such chest pain in my life prior to that a week prior to that i'd had two episodes of chest pain but it just came and went away but it wasn't as intense so this doctor says to me you could be experiencing a heart attack and i need you to go to the hospital immediately i'm going to send an ambulance for you and then i say to the doctor i work in a care home and i know if you send an ambulance for me it will come after eight ten hours because i've had experiences where it's an emergency in my opinion and the ambulance comes 10 hours later and i don't want the situation where the ambulance comes to me 10 hours later so my gp says don't worry i'll make sure that i'll send the ambulance immediately and i praise her for that because within 10 minutes the ambulance was in my home the next thing i had all the machines attached to me they were checking my ecg and all that and uh they recommended that i go to the hospital so guys i was transferred to the hospital and when i was transferred to the hospital i was taken to the a and e as an emergency because they suspected that i was having a what a heart attack between the time i arrived at the hospital and the time that i finally saw a doctor for someone who was said to be having a heart attack it was a good because i arrived around 11 and the doctor saw me just before 10 p.m from 11 a.m in the morning and the doctor saw me just before 10 p.m in the middle of it all they took some bloods of course they took some ecg so when i finally see a doctor i hadn't done an, a chest x-ray by then he asked me what are you experiencing are you still in pain and so forth and so on 
I tell him I'm still in pain. The, the pain is radiating to my arm. The pain hasn't gone away. When I breathe in, there's sharp chest pains and stuff like that. Then he says to me, go for a chest x-ray. So I do go for a chest x-ray and I come back. Then he says to me, oh, there's nothing in your chest x-ray. Your chest x-ray is fine. You're going to see the cardiology team. The cardiology team comes in and they tell me that, oh, you're probably experiencing angina. Angina is whereby there is a, for example, maybe a, an atheroma, which is a fat clot, which is uh, blocking your blood vessels. Then after saying probably you have a, an angina or whatever, he says, I'm going to refer you to the cardiac team. He says, I'm going to refer you to the cardiac clinic where they're going to evaluate everything and give you medication. So guys, I had gone to the hospital early morning. I spent the whole day in excruciating pain in hospital and I had to be released and told that, oh, someone's going to follow you up. Someone's going to call and follow you up. The cardiac team is going to follow you up without getting even paracetamol for pain. I went to hospital with a chest pain of 10 over 10. When I say 10 over 10, I mean excruciating chest pain. But I was released from hospital without being given even paracetamol to take care of the pain. As if that was not enough. Remember, the doctor who saw me said, your chest x-ray is fine. And I had to leave the hospital because my chest x-ray was fine. So after leaving the hospital, I was phoned by the cardiac team. I went home. I was phoned by the cardiac team. When the cardiac team uh, phoned me, they were phoning me to follow me up because of the angina. So I said to the cardiac team, remember I was a nurse tutor. I worked at the School of Nursing for 10 good years. And in those 10 good years, the subject which I taught the most was the cardiovascular system. I really love the cardiovascular system and I know it like the back of my hand. So when I was now being assessed for this chest pain, which I am currently having as I'm speaking to you, when I was now being assessed for this chest pain, she says to me, oh, I understand that she had angina and I say to her, I don't think this is angina. And I gave her my reasons that this is not angina because for starters, I, I don't smoke. Secondly, I might be big, but I do exercise. Thirdly, she was requesting that I come and run on a treadmill to see whether I'm going to experience more pain if I am exercising. And I said to her, I don't, I don't need to come and walk because it's walking on a treadmill because I actually ran on a treadmill and the last time I ran on a treadmill was just a couple of days ago. So the symptoms that I have are not typical of angina because angina, once you exercise or something, you have that chest pain. But I had this chest pain while I was just seated with no exercise. So I don't believe it is angina. And then she says to me, yes, uh, according to what you're saying, your age does not indicate that is angina. You don't drink, you don't smoke, and you also exercise, even if you are saying you are big, because I am big, I, I always admit that I'm fat. You do exercise and you do walk and stuff like that. So it might not be angina. I will communicate with your GP so that we look at other problems which could be causing your chest pain. Right, guys? So which means I was officially what? Discharged from the cardiac clinic. After being discharged from the cardiac clinic, guys, 13 days later, remember, I was not given any treatment. They said heart attack and I was not given any treatment. 13 days later, I'd gone to the gym that morning, so which means uh, my phone was on silent. After the gym around 11, I see there are three missed calls from the hospital. Three missed calls in the hospital saying, Pauline, we need you to come back to the hospital. It's something to do with your chest x-ray. Remember, the doctor said my chest x-ray was fine. There were three missed calls, there were voice messages. Pauline, you need to come to the hospital. Phone this number, we need you to come back to the hospital immediately. This is 13 days later, guys. 13 good days later. When the doctor eventually got hold of me, she was in panic that we need you to come back to the hospital. Something has changed in your x-ray. Guys, does an x-ray ever change? Does an x-ray ever change? So I said to her, okay, I am going to work today because if it's an emergency and I've waited for 13 days, it means that it's not an emergency. I'll come to hospital tomorrow. So that particular day, I went to work and I went back to hospital the following day. And when I went back to the hospital the following day, they were calling me because they're suspecting that I've got what we call pulmonary embolism. 
pulmonary embolism guys is a very serious condition if you have that condition within an hour or two you can drop dead and die if it's not managed properly you understand you can drop dead and die so when i walked in there they said oh it's an issue to do with your x-ray and the nurse said the same thing to me that your x-ray changed and i was like excuse me i'm a nurse and i know that an x-ray does not change after telling them that i am a nurse i know that a chest x-ray doesn't change they go on to say it's just that uh the radiographers you know those who take the x-rays they wrote a report on your chest x-ray and um because they wrote a report to cover their backs imagine they are telling me that to cover their backs we also have to be seen doing our part so we need to do some investigations which means if it wasn't for the x-ray department writing a comment on my x-ray they're not going to do investigations and when they were doing their investigations guys they collected bloods they said they were collecting bloods because they wanted to see if there was any clots in the blood and if maybe the clots dissolved or there's still a blockage and their clots are blocking the blood vessels because pulmonary embolism is a situation whereby there is a clot a blood clot in the lungs and if that blood clot dislodges you can have a even a heart attack you can have heart damage you can have lung damage and most of the times if it gets into the major blood vessels you can actually drop dead and die so they collected bloods because they wanted to find out whether it got dissolved but myself when i left the hospital even on the day that i went to hospital because of a uh, chest pains i had given myself cardiac aspirin because I always keep cardiac aspirin at home. And when I came back home, after I was not given treatment in the hospital, I started treating myself at home on a daily basis. I give myself cardiac aspirin. It's now part of my everyday, my vitamins and my cardiac aspirin. So all the while before I went back to hospital, I was drinking my cardiac aspirin, meaning even if there was a clot, it would have dissolved because I was what? I was treating myself with cardiac aspirin and so they collected bloods and what i did not like when they're collecting bloods guys they don't even explain to you what they're doing fair enough they're collecting bloods the next thing they're putting up a cannula and everything they don't tell you why they're putting up a cannula until i ask why are you putting up a cannula they say oh you might go for an emergency ct pulmonary angiogram where they're going to be doing a ct scan where they'll view my blood vessels between the heart and the lungs so when the results came, I'm sure the results showed them that uh, the d dimer results showed them that there, was, there were no clots in the blood. And then they became confused because they were so worried. They strongly believed that I had pulmonary embolism. They strongly believed that I had pulmonary embolism, yet they made me, they made me go home with such a life-threatening condition. Now they are confused. They don't know what the diagnosis is. And they had to take my x-ray and go back to the radiographers and ask what is the problem that they identified in the chest x-ray. Because them as the doctors, like I'd already said, the doctor said there was nothing wrong with my chest x-ray. So they explained to them, showing them in the x-ray what the issue was and so forth and so on. Then she comes back to me and says, oh, now I understand what the issue was. The issue was with your x-ray. So they've shown me where the problem is. Let me show you your x-ray. The moment she opens uh, the computer, guys, to show me the x-ray, before she even points out the problem, I point out to her that there is the problem. Because one of the courses that I specialized in, it involved the inter reading and the interpretation of x-rays and also diagnosing people through x-rays. So the moment she showed me my chest x-ray, I was able to identify the problem and say, there is the problem. And she was like, yes, that is the problem for sure. There is this portion of your lungs. It shows as if uh, there are some uh, protruding blood vessels. So you need to know why your blood vessels in the lungs are protruding and so forth. So you are going to go for a CT pulmonary angiogram. Right. So did I go for the CT pulmonary angiogram on that day? No, I didn't. Remember, they called me two weeks later from the 11th of February. They booked my CT scan pulmonary angiogram for the 26th of March. I went back to the hospital on the 26th of March, guys. I was still having episodes of chest pain. Like I've already said, even as I speak to you right now, I have chest pain, although I'm now on treatment. So they took my bloods, guys. What is This is what is annoying me the most. I went to the hospital on the 26th of March and i did the ct pulmonary angiogram and when i did the ct pulmonary angiogram they said to me 
your results are out and you are sending them to the GP because it was in the morning and you can phone your GP in the afternoon and find out what your results are because you have sent your results to the GP. I go home guys, I phone the GP in the afternoon of the 26th and tell them that my results have been sent to you. GP says there's nothing. I phone tomorrow, nothing. Two days later, nothing. Three days later, nothing. A week later, until the receptionist says to me, oh no, they lied to you. City pulmonary angiogram results usually come out after two to three weeks. Check after two weeks or so. Two weeks, I check, nothing. Three weeks, I check, nothing. Four weeks, I check, nothing. Until I say, guys, this does not make sense because I was told that these results, you are going to receive them same day. But it's been a month now. And I still haven't re received my results. And then they say to me, the best thing that you can do is to go back to the hospital. Guys, I was called as an emergency. The doctor was phoning me five times and leaving voice messages saying that they need to see me immediately. But I'd spent the whole month without getting my results. One full month without getting my results. Do you know how frustrating that is? Especially if you've got persistent chest pain and you don't know what is going on. So last week when I was coming from work in the morning, I had that excruciating chest pain. And even on the days prior to that, you know, I've been doing these walks where I said I want to lose weight. I've been going for trails. I've done trails where I go uphill. And guys, you can hear my breathing in these videos. The way I'll be breathing when I go up here clearly shows that there is a problem probably in my lungs or something like that. So after doing these walks and so forth, the following days I had excruciating chest pain as well. That's when I decided, you know what, let me go straight to the hospital and go for my results. So last week on the 2nd of May, I eventually went to hospital, went to where I did the city pulmonary angiogram and explained to them that guys, I did a CT pulmonary angiogram on the 26th of March and it has been more than a month. I still don't have my results. And then they said, oh, we cannot give you your results. I said, but what do you expect me to do? Because the GP says they don't have results. Eventually, she said, let me check in the computer. When she checked in the computer, guys, the results actually went to the GP on the 26th of March. Same day as they had said, but I spent a month without getting my results. Then she, she then told me that go back to your GP because we cannot give you your results. Even if you know what your results are, we cannot give you your results. Go back to your GP and tell him that we sent him the results on the 26th of March and you should check the ECR systems, whatever those systems are. Guys, I drive all the way back from hospital. Remember, I'm in a lot of pain. I drive back from the hospital. I go to the GP. Then I tell the GP that uh, they said uh, you need to check the ECR files. Before I even spoke to the GP, the secretaries were like, no, we don't touch the ECR files. They are the ones who are supposed to give you the results. Like, but no, you know that I've been phoning for the whole month. And uh, you said I should go to the hospital. I've gone to the hospital and they've said I should come and give you this so that you check. They went to the GP and the GP says, I'm not going to check the ECR files because it's time consuming. I'm not the one who ordered these tests. So the person who ordered these tests is the one who's supposed to give you the results. It's not my job to give you the results which were requested by another GP. Can you imagine the frustration, guys? And then they said to me, you have to go back to the hospital. I just driven from hospital. They said, you have to go back to the hospital. I sit down there uh, contemplating what to do. And... They didn't realize that I'd sat down at the GP office contemplating what to do. They started talking about me. In my presence, they couldn't see me because I wasn't in their vicinity. I was seated just below the counter on a side where they could not see me. They started talking about me. What, what is she expecting us to do? As if it's my fault that I was sent to go back to the GP and tell them that he is the one supposed to give me a resource. I was like, excuse me, are you talking about me? I was now annoyed, guys. And then uh, they just kept quiet. Went back to the hospital. Again. Went back to the department again. And told them that this is what I've been told. I was now so frustrated, guys. 
And then after saying this is what I've been told, they, they sent me back to the emergency area where I was admitted before. And they said, okay, go and present your case that side. So something which was supposed to be done on the 26th of March is now being done on the 2nd of May. And they told me that I've got a life-threatening condition. If it was you, how would you feel? Spending the whole month having excruciating chest pains. There were days where I couldn't go to work because the chest pain would be so severe. It's hard to drive. Sometimes it's hard to breathe and all that. So I go there and they have to start everything afresh from the blood, from the ECG, from the everything that I had done except for the CT pulmonary angiogram. And then when the doctor comes in, comes back and says, no, the issue was not with a... Uh, the blood clots actually the issue is with your your chest x-ray you know there's a portion of your lungs that appears as if it has got atelectasis atelectasis guys is whereby a, a portion of your lung collapses either a portion of your lung collapses or your whole lung collapses and from what i saw because i saw the x-ray myself it was a portion of the right side of the lung the base of the lung which appeared to have a problem and he says to me it appears as if it has some fluids which means it had nothing to do with all oh, the pulmonary embolism and what, what 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 but the collapse of the lung and the fluid in the lungs understand guys and then he says to me i need to send you back for another chest x-ray to see if there's been a, a difference uh from the last x-ray i go for another chest x-ray and it's actually worse than what it was in the first place and i blame them because if it's worse than what it was in the first place from the day that i did my x-ray and to the day that they finally said it appears as if there's atelectasis in your lungs it was two months so if this is something which is progressive if this is something which can kill you, which means you can drop dead and die there. Being misdiagnosed, being tossed left, right and center like you are a nothing. Being, being misdiagnosed, being tossed left, right and center like you are nothing. And in addition to that, he says, oh, your CRP is also elevated, which means somehow you've got some infection. I went to the hospital three months ago only to be told three months later that you've got infection only to be told three months later that you've got atelectasis which is lung collapse only to be told three months later that you have some fluid in the lungs and then i'm, I'm given antibiotics and whatever drugs that i'm given and i'm told oh we cannot further manage you we need to refer you to the respiratory team and the respiratory team is going to get in contact with you so and as it is i'm now seated waiting again for another letter from the respiratory team where they're going to go and start investigating again who knows they might come up with a different diagnosis altogether but what i can tell you is that at the present moment i have chest pains that's why you see that at times i go for a long period of time without posting videos because you know constantly i'll come and say guys i'm not feeling well now i'm even tired of saying guys i'm not feeling well i just keep quiet and not post videos and if i i feel energetic or if i feel a bit better because after the antibiotics and whatnot this week i've been feeling a bit better i'll come and post videos but guys imagine how you'd feel being misdiagnosed being told you've got a life-threatening condition and going and doing uh, examinations to check if you've got a life-threatening condition and you get don't get your results up to a month later do you know how many people have been misdiagnosed here in uk and they go to hospital some of them they go back home and they die because they've been misdiagnosed it's very disappointing guys because if you're in a first world country honestly i believe you expect better but what I've seen is there is no better here. Even on that day where I had to literally chase my own results to know what is going on with me. I went to the hospital in the morning. The same thing which happened when I first went to the hospital where you spend the whole day in the hospital. It was the same thing which happened. They collected blood and everything. I went there in the morning. They were done with me around 1900 hours at night. So what I can tell you right now, guys, is that mm, in this UK, do not get sick. 
do not get sick i i did not like that experience that i had i did not like being tossed left right and center i did not like the fact that i got a diagnosis three months later i did not like the fact that i was given treatment three months later i did not like the fact that i went to the hospital first day excruciating pain pain of 10 over 10 nothing was given to me i wasn't given any pain medication i wasn't given any i wasn't given anything i had to treat myself at home i had to get myself anti-inflammatories i had to get myself uh, anticoagulants and all that guys and i don't think that was fair and i don't think the treatment that i got was fair and don't think as an individual it's fair to be called and told oh the radiologists were trying to cover their backs so we are also trying to cover our backs you get what i'm saying guys I was very, very disappointed. I don't know, maybe I'm too petty. In your opinion, let me know what you think. Otherwise, guys, this is my experience with the NHS hospitals that I wanted to tell you. Do let me know what you think of this in the comment section. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, guys. And please do pray for me that I get better soon because, like I'm saying, the chest pain is killing me. The chest pain is killing me. As I'm speaking, the chest pain is killing me. But... I'm hoping for the best. Now I'm just waiting for the letter from the respiratory team to hear what they are going to say. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.